Bonjour mes amis, thanks for joining me on Survey Homestead again. This time I want to tell you guys about some problems we're having with the good old John Deere 2010. The PTO is just not working right. Let's get into it. Oh man, that sounds terrible. And then it even stops spinning every once in a while. You see the bottom one's the 1000 RPM and the top is the 540 and that's the one we need. I'm gonna have to take this thing apart. Golly. I was thinking we might have to put a second come along. See if, you, if that one won't take up another eight or 10 inches. You go on the other side and look. I'll, I'll do a couple of cranks and you can see where it's been. This is coming up with it. That's the thing. I think it called that the load control Didn't mechanism. Didn't this have the spring on it though? No, it was a bottom. Well, we couldn't part. get it off because it felt like there was some piston or spring or something in it. Can you see in there? Mm. You you went all the way oh, up. Oh, look at that gear. Do you want to come up anymore, or you just want to study? Yeah, it? it seems like it's going. I think we disconnected the correct things. Looks like it's about to break out. Oh, okay. Just barely. Oh, I'm, I'm feeling like we didn't have to disconnect any of that stuff. Because look, it's all coming up with it. You see? Oh, I see. What Everything you, in yeah. that house. We thought part was going to stay at the bottom and part was going to come up with the housing. But just those clips it's and all stuff, up. huh? So it is kind of a lot uh, to get back here. On a big old spacious tractor, you would think everything would be pretty easy to get to, but I don't know, I, I guess it's just basically weird design flaws with some of these things. And the manual that I have is not the best. Um, I should get the big, thick, true repair manual, but this is sort of the thinner, concise uh, version, and it, it has a lot of good information in it, but the drawings aren't the best, and they don't really show good assembly layouts and stuff like that. So anyway, to get everything off to get to the, the PTO output box, you need to remove the floorboard and you need to remove the seat base, which goes there and the seat. There's the base. There's the seat. Both are heavy. The floorboard is heavy. Everything's heavy on this thing. And then you need to get this whole hydraulic assembly off. Assembly off. So this is the controls for the, the rock arm or the three point hitch and it's two lifting cylinders. You can see them down there. Those are the cylinders. So this thing is super, super heavy. So to get it off, you need to take off all of these bolts around here. And there are a few really large ones. And oh, before you get, so before you take this off, you may have some linkages to remove. This tractor is evidently a more simple version, but some of them have like an extra lever here or there to control like draft and different things if you're plowing. So we didn't have to really remove anything even though we thought we did. But inside you do have to remove the supply to the hydraulic lift cylinders. And that comes in right here. So you need to take off those two bolts. and don't drop them in there and then remove these and then I think there's four large ones and then around the back we took off what we could but it ended up not really being that necessary so carefully lay down your three-point arms with the springs uh, taken off and everything all of that stuff can be uh, pretty dangerous to do so it's best to have two people and just think about where your feet and your hands are and then bolts that hold this back part to this, which are like here. Oh, here's the, uh, yeah, here are the back two of the large ones. The front two are over here. And then you should be able to lift this bad boy. And then you can get to the PTO output, output box itself, which would go here. Need to be able to see. Is this what we need to be able to see? This, yeah. this right here. This yep. is 
This You're is right. what we need to work on, right? Well, yes, yeah. Well, we need to get that yellow spring off and maybe something else to get this whole PTO clutch assembly thing out. Okay. And so I think we need to keep clearing this so okay. that we can reach right. in there. So we're here. Removal and reinstallation of the PTO clutch and all that. It says refer to paragraph 161. That's where we just were to disassemble all of this. And I didn't know where to stop mm -hmm. in paragraph 161. So now we can come back to this. Once we get this lifted all the way up, which is all of this right here. Once we get that out of the way, we can reach in and like remove spring number 24 oh, yeah. mm -hmm. and whatever else these instructions are saying. Right. So we're back here where we need to be. Okay. Right. From above, there are two things you need to disconnect. One is a yellow spring. And the other one is this arm that connects to the engage lever for the PTO. This one may have to be a combination of getting to it from above and then loosening the PTO output box and then getting to it from here because it's just a strange pin with a pin in it. So what this connects to has this pin going through both of them and then a cotter pin holding this from coming out. So I don't know, it's kind of aggravating to get to. I wish they would have thought of something better. doesn't look too good in there so we have the 540 and 1000 rpm shafts and they seem to be both driven all the time by this floating gear and it sits on this loose pin this pin is held in by this outer cover and by the body of this box itself but look at the pin isn't messed up but somehow it got out of its space right here and this gear has done some damage I can't tell if this was machined this way or the gear did it but but this this hole has definitely been wallowed out by this pin and the corners of the gear have a little bit of damage right here But thankfully no teeth are broken off. Nothing else major seems to be wrong. This needle bearing is done. The needles came out when we took the shaft out. I don't know how difficult that will be to find or to press the old ones out and press the new ones in. Hopefully it's not too bad. And look at this gunk. I mean, look, this is terrible. How did that all get in here? And where's the rest of the fluid? Like half of this seems to be water. And I, I discovered what must be a fill port by looking in here. See that cavity there? It seems to lead here. This was all covered in dirt and trash and gunk. But there's some type of a set screw in there to add hydraulic fluid. So I didn't even know this was a separate container of fluid. I thought maybe anything back here that needed to be lubricated was lubricated by the hydraulic and transmission fluid that's all together in one under the, under the tractor. So at least now we know what that crazy noise was from. 
and why the shaft that had the load on it was not spinning properly it's because this gear that that drives it was just sitting in there crooked well, I hope we can get these items taken care of well I was hoping for a repair that wasn't going to be this complicated but it is it's, it's a pretty big deal right here so now the plan okay first I need to find all the parts and then I need to take all the old parts out. Then I need to put the new parts in. Then I need to reassemble the tractor. Then I need to cut grass with it. Thanks for watching Survey Homestead, everybody. Be on the lookout for the next video where I get all the parts and get this bad boy fixed up.